Here's some stuff about semi-log and log-log graphing. Uh, pretty quick, because I do this with my students in class. When you've got semi-log graph paper, or choose a semi-log option on a computer, for example, you've got a linear scale across the bottom, and a log scale on the y scale. You can also invert it so that this is linear and this is log, but we're going to talk about what happens with the log scale on the, the output axis, the dependent variable, the y. And um, the punchline that we find, or one of the punchlines, is that exponential functions actually get graphed as straight lines. And that's pretty cool. And so let's look at an, ex an explicit example. Let's look at so the amount of something, like money in your bank account maybe, 4 times e to the 0.5t. So we could be thinking of maybe continuous compounding or any of the models where we use e as the base, partly because it's just such a nice standardized base. I went ahead and calculated some values there just using the calculator. And we can plot those points. So we can plot 0, 4. And so this is uh, 10 to the 1. This is 10 to the 0, or in other words, 1. This is 2, 3, 4. And so here's where we're starting at 4. And then t equals 2. A of t equals 10.9, just under 11. Okay, That's not here. This is going to be 20. This is 30. This is 40. Um, and so 11, 10.9 or 11, it's going to be right about just right in here. Gonna have to little eyeball a little bit. This is where having the computer do it would be useful, but it's still not too bad to do it by hand. Next one, t equals four, a just about thirty. Okay, that one's just right about here. We're starting to see this pattern emerge. That here it went up by seven. If you look at differences, it went up by uh, almost twenty. If you look at differences here, that seems to be an increasing rate, which would be an exponential growth. But in terms of the ratio. That ratio of 10.9 over 4 turns out to be just about, just exactly E, actually. And then the ratio here, 30 over 10, again, very roughly a little less than 3, it turns out to be E. That's what's constant. And when you go up by the constant ratio, that's what creates a straight line on this graph paper. A couple more, 10, 594, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like that. And 20, 88,000. So it's, even though it's growing quite a bit at, at 20, it still stays on the paper because this paper accommodates 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000. So 88,000 is just almost off the paper, but just under 90,000. So that would be, that last dotted line would be 90,000. Okay. Hmm. Kind of small writing, but it's, I think it'll be okay. So the cool thing is that, yep. You betcha, this actually all lies on a straight line. My ruler's not very long, but it'll work. All lies on a straight line. So I want to make that a little more quantitative. What we observe when we do this in class is that not only do exponential functions become straight lines, but the slope of this guy um, is proportional to the to the rate, the rate constant. In this case, you could think of it as an interest rate. So I'm going to go, I'm going to measure out to this dotted line, which is the 10 line. And that is 10.35 centimeters on my ruler. And I'm going to see how far we went up from 4 to this guy here. At this interest rate of 0.5, that's a pretty big interest rate, I admit. Um, it's looking like 7.15 centimeters. So here I should really mark this as this guy. So it's really this, that's 10.35. This is 7.15. So here, what we're getting is that when the rate is 0.5, the slope is 7.15 over 10.35, let me turn to my little computer here, 7.35 over 10.35, oops, mm, that's about 3 quarters, a little less, 0 0.71, about 0 0.7. Okay, so what we discover when you do a little more experimentation with this is that 
forgot to change the, take this out of the way. There we go. About 0.7. Um, that they're directly proportional to each other. The slope of these lines goes up in wonderful lockstep to the rate constant, and we can actually solve for that now. It looks like 0 0.7 is k times 0 0.5, double both sides, and our mysterious proportionally constant is 1.4. So we're getting that for this graph paper, and this is quite special to this graph paper, with a certain number of centimeters for a 10 cycle here, and a certain number of centimeters for one unit here, we're getting this relationship. So this is important. Only for this paper does that constant apply. For other semi-log paper, you're still going to have s equals kr. That's universal. But it's the 1.4 special of this paper. How could we use that? Well, suppose I have some data that, like this, it started out some sort of investment growth, started at 100, and then let's say 20 years later it's up here and let's say it tracked kind of on a straight line but maybe some ups and downs some wiggles something like this but overall it's kind of got a trend if we try to just smooth out the wiggles a bit it's got a trend like this Okay, I'd like to know, roughly speaking, what kind of interest rate did that correspond to? Yes, there were ups and downs. Maybe this was investing in the stock market or something. Um, but can I, if I want to compare that to my example, what kind of interest rate does that amount to? Well, we can use now a very quantitative way to do that. Quantitative but low tech is to use this relationship, S equals 1.4R, and just figure out the slope. We can just do that with a ruler. And there's, of course, more sophisticated computer-based methods to do this, but I still like this. Okay, well, I'm going to use the 10.35 again. Why not? Okay. And this went up to this trend line between these, those two points. And that is 2 point... It's like 2.25. Uh, so 2.25. So let's calculate that slope. All we need is kind of a four-function calculator here. 2.25 over 10.35 is the slope. 0.22. Alrighty. So our slope now is 0.22. Let's put it over here. And that's equal to 1.4R. R is 0.22 over 1.4. And that's about one seventh. But let's just go ahead and get it off of here. Oh, so here it is. I can get it off of here. Actually, just divide by 1.4. Very easy. About 1.55, or 0.155. So this guy, I know I'm filling up the board here. Oh. Okay, about 0.1555, or about 15, 15.5%. That's still pretty good. That's still gr good growth. Let's see if that makes sense. Um, let's think about rule of 70 kind of thinking. It went from 100 to 200 in a little over four years. Yeah, and if you think about the rule of 70, I'm finally going to raise some stuff. Rule of 70 says 70 divided by, you know, about 15.5%. Oh, that's four point something. Yeah, maybe 4.5-ish years. Yeah. So that makes sense. So you can use rule of 70 thinking, or you can make these observations about the nice link between the slopes of these lines and the interest rates. So all of these, all the different lines coming out of here represent different kinds of exponential growth at different interest rates, and the interest rate is just proportional to the slope that you're seeing there. So that's cool. I think I'll save log log graphing for part two.